Have you wondered what Navamsha nakshatras tell you? Have you ever used Navamsha nakshatras? Or maybe never, right? So, Navamsha is the chart of yourself. Oops, then what the hell is the Divan? <laughs> Every chart is your own chart, right? But speci especially the Navamsha, the D9 chart, it's like you zoom into the, your ninth house. It's like that. So even if your ninth house in the D1 is empty or your ninth lord is uh, badly placed or well placed, exalted, debilitated, enemy sign, afflicted, combust, whatever it is, your Navamsha will tell you actually what is going on with the ninth house. And that is why we say that Navamsha is the chart of Dharma. And that is why it tells us how ultimately a person is inherently. What is the person inside? Who is he or who is she? Okay. So therefore, please never ignore Navamsha and please try your best to use nakshatras in the Navamsha. Otherwise, you may not actually understand the pulse of a horoscope. Very, very, very important. Alright, so here are 10 things which Navamsha nakshatras tell us. But before that, don't forget to subscribe if you are new and for personalized consultations, my website is down below. And don't forget with the thumbs up in between. <laughs> and yes, I will be in New Delhi, India for consultations from 25th November to 2nd December. And in Guwahati from 10th December to 10th of January next year. If you want to have a consultation with me one-on-one -on -one personally, then you can always send an email at exoticastrology at the rate gmail.com. All right. So now, the first thing that Navamsha Nakshatras will tell you is the strength of a planet. So, for example, you need to understand this carefully. Okay, don't just think oh, I'm talking in terms of signs or houses. So, <clears throat> for example, if you have a planet in the 10th house. So, for example, let's take, you know, you have sun in the 10th house. Okay, so what's going on with sun? So, suppose sun is in the 10th house, you know, you are a cancer ascendant and sun is exalted in Aries in the 10th house. Now, in Aries... And I'm talking of D1 at the moment. Okay, so in Aries, there are, you know, there is the nakshatra of Ashwini. Okay, so now you have seen that sun is in Ashwini. Okay, and in the D1, Ketu is also, let's assume, reasonably well placed. Then you will say, oh, that's a great placement. Okay, but now what you do is you come and see the nakshatra where sun is placed in the Navamsha. Okay. So, in the Navamsha, if suppose sun is placed uh, in another nakshatra like Swati, then that is fabulous because, why, why am I saying that's fabulous? Only, only for this situation. Why? Because if you see Ashwini has this trait of moving swiftly, okay, and Swati also has a trait of moving swiftly, okay, they are very quick learners, you know, quick earners, okay, so then the strength of the planet is multifold okay if the nakshatra uh, in the navamsha is also supportive so for this you have to be aware of the nakshatras and uh, their uh, relationships with each other you know like which nakshatra supports which other nakshatra okay in which area of life because uh, some of you wrote in uh, the comments in my recent nakshatra video moon nakshatra video that you would like to have a video on, you know, like every planet for every nakshatra, that, that will be like a 100-hour session, okay? If I do it, uh, it's it's not possible for me, okay? So, please study the nakshatras individually, the 27 or even Abhijit, including 28. So, then you will know uh, for which house, which nakshatra is supporting which other nakshatra straight, okay? So, therefore, uh, it will tell you the actual strength of a particular planet, uh, Number two is it will tell you the refinement of a particular planet. Now, what is refinement? See, every planet, uh, yeah, whichever planet it is, okay, uh, you you will always see that, you know, there is like uh, something good with a planet, with an akshatra, something, you know, bad, okay. So, so then you may be confused, okay, what's going on? How is this, how is this actually working out? Okay, how, how? What is the planet going to do at the end? What is the conclusion? Like, for example, if uh, for Cancer Lagna, Sun is in Ashwini, then what will happen? Like, uh, will the person keep changing jobs or will the person move to a new job or will the person get a big position? So, 
to know what the planet will do at the end, you you also need to check the Navamsha Nakshatra. So they can tell you where is the ultimate destination of the person. So the D1 Nakshatras will tell you where the person is beginning or the externals. But the D9 Nakshatras will tell you where, where uh, the person is ending at the end. Okay. So therefore the D9 will tell you which Tattva of the planet will come out. Okay. Is it the Sattva Gun, Rajogun, Tamogun, which Gun will come out? Okay. So therefore Navamsha Nakshatras are very important because they will tell you will the planet actually help you or create troubles for you. Okay. Number number three, it will show you your divine blessings for every planet. So for example, as I said, if uh, a planet is in a particular nakshatra in D1 and uh, in D9, it is well placed, you know, especially in trines and the nakshatras of the Navamsha of that planet are also supporting this planet. Then it can inherently mean that your planet, uh, the energies related to that planet, you have good karma related to those areas of life. You know, so for example, Venus, or uh, if Venus is in a great nakshatra in the Navamsha, in a great house, then it means you you inherently have good blessings. Okay, now you may be wondering which is a good nakshatra for Venus. No, there is no good or bad nakshatra for Venus. Okay, it depends on your chart. So, for example, in your chart, you know if in your D1, Venus is in Uttar Falguni. Okay. Uttar Falguni is a nakshatra which is known to, you know, keep marriages, keep things long term. And once you have that, now you have to see what is going on in the Navamsha. So, you know, in the Navamsha, if, you know, your Venus is in Scorpio, in Jeshta nakshatra. So, now, Uttar Falguni and Jeshta have some contradictions. Like, Uttar Falguni wants to do things together. Jeshta wants to do it alone. Okay, or by bullying others sometimes. Okay, so that is a difference. But both are great planners and administrators. So this this means you are blessed to have administration skills by nature. Okay, so therefore it can show you where you are blessed already. Number four. This is very 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 important. It will remove the noise from the D one. <laughs> now what is noise? You know the D one can be very noisy at times, which means. Suppose uh, there are three planets and they are in, you know, prominent nakshatras and uh, the other three planets are in other prominent nakshatras and then uh, the remaining three are in other other two pro or one or two prominent nakshatras and you are like, I have no idea what, what the hell is going on and you are not able to understand what's going on in your chart, okay? Then you should come and see the D9. So in the D9, now, whichever nakshatras traits are more prominent, those nakshatras will actually uh, control the say. It will uh, it will decide the direction you know, where the chart is going. So therefore, if your D1 is not giving you an answer, then don't forget to check the D9. But even if it is giving you an answer, you should still check the D9. All right, then just don't treat it in isolation. That's uh, something very important. Number five, it tells you about your wealth and prosperity. Uh -huh. But I thought it's from the D1, right? Well, also, yes. So for wealth, you need to check the D1, the D9, and the D10. Okay, very, very important to some extent D60 also. But primarily, you have to check the D1, D9, and D10. But the Navamsha Nakshatras can give you great clues. For example, as I said, <coughs> if your 10th Lord of D1, 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 10th Lord is in Uttar Falguni and in Artha House. Then that's fantastic. And on the other hand, you know, if that same 10th Lord of your D1 is in, uh, you know, great nakshatras for career, you know, like Rohini or even Uttar Falguni or, you know, Jishta, for example, or even Ashwini, then then uh, it means your ability to earn money is uh, very good. You, you, you can spot opportunities for wealth creation very fast and you can do fantastic, okay? So therefore, the wealth is also decided to a large extent from the Navamsha Nakshatras and the Navamsha Nakshatras will tell you what kind of circumstances can give you wealth, okay? And how should you react to those circumstances? And... The nakshatras in D1 will actually tell you what led to those circumstances. Okay, like why did these uh, circumstances come around in the first place? What what caused these circumstances to come? And the D10 nakshatras will tell you uh, what exactly have to do. Have, do you have to do in your profession? No, the literal work 
because of which you will get money okay so all the three nakshatras are uh, the, the nakshatras and all the three charts are very important and if you do this uh, systematically you will understand why you are behaving in a particular way in your profession okay number 6 it tells you about love and relationships very 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 important just like money love is also not an exception you know and maybe even more than money you need to check the d9 nakshatras for money okay uh, for love and uh, marriage especially because we know venus is the atma karak for the navamsha right so very 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 important <clears throat> if the trine lords in your navamsha and your venus especially and the lord of your seventh if these four planets seventh lord fifth lord ninth lord and venus if these four planets are well placed in good nakshatras which support marriage you no know, uh, like uttar falguni or rohini for example you know or could be hasta nakshatra also uttara shada you no know, <clears throat> then that's fantastic okay but if they are in you know difficult nakshatras like mula then you know there is kritika then you know, swati uh, swati can promote a lot of affairs okay so then there could be trouble okay uh, but again you have to see the d1 and no uh, is the 6th house getting activated so now suppose in the d1 your married life is good but in the d9 the nakshatras are you know like you know you have some nakshatras which uh, And don't support long term marriage you know like kritika for example then what can happen is your speech may be very harsh in the married life and you know you you may you may be too critical but because the d1 is showing your married life is good so you will not get divorced you will stay married but it will still be a unhappy marriage okay number 7 it will show the emotional strength of a person very 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 important so you will see lot of people they will you know boast lot of things externally you know they are very smart very you know, very flamboyant you know very attractive very commanding uh, very dominating sometimes and you may think oh wow this person is like amazing you know you, you may think like that but the moment you will go and uh, you know see the, the navamsha nakshatras and if you know they are like very difficult nakshatras you know like <clears throat> for example if somebody has too many planets in purva bhadrapada then the person can do all this because the person wants to prove to everybody that they are superior so this can show high level of narcissism okay like jesta for example it can show that you love power and you love to bully others and dominate everybody else so therefore the navamsha nakshatras will tell you what is the motivation uh, behind doing everything okay well, what's the emotional state of a person number 8 it will it will show you know higher wisdom so suppose in the d1 the chart is very good you know career is excellent <clears throat> but in the no uh, but but in the d9 if you know there are excellent nakshatras you know like pushya nakshatra for example okay and you know there, there are nakshatras like uh, bharani also at times okay so these nakshatras can show that you really care for others and you, know, you want to do betterment of others so then you know this person is not just earning money to become a millionaire or a billionaire this person also wants to help others and help society that is one of the very uh, strong motivations in regards to why this person is doing this is not just money or power okay but sometimes it may be the other way around a person is being neutral <laughs> and not too wealthy or affluent or influential and it may apparently seem that this person is not very much uh, interested in earning money but it may be uh, the the d9 may tell you that no no they want to earn money uh, to you know have all the luxuries of life but it's just that they are unable to earn the money okay so it's like uh, they are not pious by virtue it's like uh, by force okay <laughs> number 9 it will show the intuition okay so for example many times you will see that people have a very strong chart but they are not able to uh, decide you know what they should do in life you know like you know for example if you have two job offers what you should do okay so if the navamsha nakshatras are not supporting then the person will be confused then the person will think oh what is this you know i have nothing good in life but the problem is they are not able to make a decision so it's their fault not the fault of their destiny so therefore 
if the Ramamsha nakshatras are supportive of your uh, intuition, then you can make decisions very quick, okay, very fast. That's brilliant. And last but not the least, the most important reason why you should never miss Navamsha nakshatras is because they show your happiness. <laughs> okay, very, very, very important. Now, when I say happiness, I don't mean in a moral or in a generalistic sense, you know, happiness is an inside job. No, I'm not meaning in that context, okay? But are you happy in life <clears throat> in regards to the profession that you are having? Are you happy in life in regards to the marriage, okay, in terms of your health? So it may be good or bad morally, but still are you happy? You know, because there, there are some people apparently they are very happy doing wrong things also, right? <laughs> So if, if you go and tell them, oh, you know, maybe you are unhappy in life, you know, your chart indicates this, but, you know, then uh, they're like, no, I am I'm very happy, you know, I am doing drug dealing, I am earning a lot of money, you know, and then, you know, yeah, I'm doing trafficking or whatever, you know, like uh, smuggling and all this, and I'm very happy in life, I have everything that I need, you know. <laughs> so all this also... The Ramamsha Nakshatras will tell, okay, so if you want to know if a person is actually happy in every area of life, so check the respective planets uh, like, you know, uh, Sun, Mercury, Saturn for career, Venus, 7th Lord for profession, uh, for marriage, then 2nd Lord for family, 5th Lord for children, you need to see which Nakshatras they are, what kind of energies do they have, okay, so therefore, if you see that Harmony is playing out, then, you know, the person is happy, even if the person is doing criminal activities, okay, <laughs> which is somewhat bizarre, but that's what, uh, that's what the material world is, like, uh, it's a place of criminals, basically, <laughs> because we are living in Kaliuga, and Kaliuga is the age of bad ventures in spirituality, right, so therefore, Regardless, somebody is a front bencher or a medium mid bencher or a back bencher, the D9 nakshatras will reveal out all their secrets. All right. Thank you so much for your patience. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And don't forget to go to my website to book a personalized one to one consultation. And New Delhi, India dates 25th November to 2nd December, 10th December to 10th January, Guwahati. Please send an email at exotic astrology at the rate gmail.com. Thank you so much. Please take care. Jai Siyara.